Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's my honor to present a case for all you professional dentists. This young guy didn't like his smile and the protrusive chin. He dreamed of having a smile like Jimmy Wang. In his upper arch of a bilateral canine and molar positions were asymmetrical. The maxillary arch had a rotated counterclockwise due to a different number of, teeth, of different teeth on both sides. Compared with the upper arch, the lower arch was symmetrical. From the frontal view, the upper dental midline was shifted to the right side of the lower dental midline by three millimeters. Anterior crossbar was obviously displayed. The bilateral canine relationship was class three. The right molar relationship was class one, but the left molar relationship was N on class three. Let's see what resulted in this difficult male occlusion. Uh, let's see this panel view. There were two remaining primary teeth and six congenital missing teeth, including four second premolars and two right first premolars. Wow, yeah, I see wow. Well. And there was one and the two space over the lower left side, but uh, it was occupied by a single flip. The safe analysis show that the patient had a skeletal class three discrepancy, low mandibular plane angle, retrocline lower incisors and retrusive upper lip. The DI score was 63. Most deduction was from anterior crossbar and six congenital missing teeth. Is the case difficult? Of course, it's instantly difficult. What do you think about the case? In summary, uh, the skeletal class three discrepancy combined with six congenital missing teeth resulted in collapsed class three male occlusion and dental facial asymmetry. In the following, I will tell you how to fix these two problems. Uh, firstly, the three keys to correct uh, collapsed class three male occlusion were posterior dive biter walls, class three elastics, and an open coil spring. Usually, to correct anterior crossbite, we have two options. And a uh, posterior biter ball or anterior by wrap. Anterior by wrap is more efficient in the case of minor negative over jet because it can procline the upper anterior teeth directly. Let's see the patient's uh, study model. The distance of the negative over jet was five millimeters, and the anterior crossbite was noted from canine to canine. We normally put a very long and wide anterior biram to remove occlusal interference. However, it's impractical. So we put a posterior biter balls instead. Then we talk about uh, how to correct dental facial asymmetry. We use a symmetrical mechanics. Upper left uh, primary lateral incisor is going to be removed. And uh, the size of the lower right uh, primary second molars will be reduced to 7.5 millimeters for future implant. In the upper arch, opening the right space and closing the left space will make the midline change. Closing the lower left space will recheck the lower arch. The space between upper right canine and the upper right first molar was created for implant side development. Implant side development have, has two types, vertical and horizontal, and we use the horizontal implant side development in this case. Unlike most treatments for horizontal implant side development, where uh, the one tooth is next to the anterior space, and uh, the tooth is moved from, the, from an Avios space into the endoterous space to increase, to increase uh, the, ridge, the, width, the width of the ridge. We, in this case, create space between two teeth. Only an open coil spring was used to push a couple of teeth at the same time. There were rare reports about this, but Dr. Zhang said, no problems, I like challenges. 
So uh, this interdisciplinary treatment included also treatment, implant surgery, and implant prosthesis fabrication. Let's move to the stage one, also treatment. Detox selection. Steady talk brackets were bounded on the upper anterior teeth. Upside down low talk brackets were bounded on the lower anterior teeth. In the beginning, posterior biter balls were bounded on the upper second molars to create intermediary space. Class 3 elastics were used to recheck lower anterior teeth. In addition to making space for implant side, an open coil spring was used to Procline upper anterior teeth and distalize upper posterior teeth. After 16 months, anterior cross by was corrected. At the 21st month, as the curve of speed was corrected, biter balls were removed to allow posterior tooth contact. Then we talk about dental facial asymmetry. Everybody, please focus on the upper dental mila and mid palatal ramp. At the 16th month, the upper left space was closed, but the space for implant side was not ready. Until 27th month, midline correction was done, and the space uh, for implant side development, 7.5 millimeters, was ready. Uh, most of the treatment was uh, completed. Then we took a copy CT to, to examine the bone value. Then the size of the implant, 3.5 by 10 millimeters, was selected. Then we move to stage two implant surgery. In the beginning, an incisional line, an incisional line was made a little bit close to the parietal side. We elevated the flaps and exposed the alveolar bone. Uh, after draining, we put a guide to check its parallelism, but it's too missing. Therefore, we adjusted the position of the final gel. Then an implant fixture was placed. Finally, a healing abutment was placed as the flap was closed with number four Gore-Tex suture. Four months later, we moved to stage three, implant prosthesis fabrication. This slide uh, includes every detail of impression. And two weeks later, a permanent crown was delivered. Okay, we start within 33 months of treatment, this difficult male occlusion was corrected. His anterior cross and dental facial asymmetry were solved. Compared before and after, there is a huge difference. And then we see a, a safe superimposition. MB angle was increased by three, uh, MB angle was increased by three degrees. With an open coil spring, upper incisors were proclined and the upper molars were distalized. Do you still remember the DI was 63 and now CIE is 11? It's an amazing case. Okay, now the patient has a bright smile, even better than Jianming Wang. In the end, thank you for your kind listening. Thank you very much for, uh, for the presentation. Dr. Diego, do you have any comment for this? Oh, well, the, just I want to, to say you congratulations because it's not a, an easy case to manage. The, the way you have planned the diagnosis is really good. Uh, I see the you can comment the way you, just for the audience to know, the way you have Mesialize. What have you considered to get a good mesialization of the posterior teeth in the third quadrant? To because I can see in the X-rays that the parallel of the root is quite good. So you can comment to the audience uh, something that they have to take or to think when they have to do this mechanics or mesialization of the third quadrant. Can you give us some tips that you did in the case? Excuse me, please, uh, please uh, yeah. hear your question. Yeah. I want to ask you uh -huh. if you have messialized the, the cell quadrant, the lower left, to close the space. Uh -huh. 
So you can give us some tips that you have considered or the things that you have to consider. How you have done this missilization? Is the missilization of yeah. lower, yeah, all over left, left uh, yeah. top tier mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, class three elastic. <laughs> I think class three elastics. Uh, you, you, we can use class three elastics to missilize uh, the posterior peaks. Okay. Uh -huh. So the case is fantastic, and well, I I have point all your point with a number five. <laughs> oh, oh, thank it's you. It's very good. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any more questions from Dr. Chris? Well,